Hey guys, welcome back to Last Game Polar, where this week we are going to be talking about Affinity Designer 2. Now, if you are familiar with Adobe Illustrator, this is going to be within that realm. The difference is going to be very apparent in a little bit, and we're going to talk more about that, but also if this is going to be a useful tool for you to design, say, your landscape. Now, I should say that this software is not free. However, it is very affordable, especially if you are thinking of doing, say, things with designing um, logos or maybe, say, decals and stuff like that. This will be able to help you with that. But is this going to be good for you if you want to use it to design your own landscape, say, backyard or front yard? Well, let's get right into it and see why this probably will be able to help you. I should say that this will not replace any CAD software that you may already have using uh, maybe AutoCAD or Vectorworks, things like that. It is not going to replace it. However, it is a really powerful software that you can use. Now, right now, what you're seeing in the screen is just me putting in a plot plan. And if you've never heard of that, I did make a video about that. But if you already know what that is and you have one, then you can grab that via PDF or PNG and put it right into it. You're going to go here and then you're going to select the image wherever your folder is. You put it in here and you can start drawing on it. Now, the good thing about this one that's going to be similar to a CAD program in the sense that you can put it to scale. Now, one of the good things about this one is that when you are configuring your page, say you're going to go to file up here somewhere, uh, you go to new. Once you get a new one, you can essentially tell it what you need. So there are different kinds of stuff that you can see here in the screen. But the one that you're going to go down is going to go to architectural all the way to the bottom. Depending on the size of the project that you need, you might need a 24 by 18 or maybe a 24 by 36. That's going to depend on how big you want this plant to be. Um, if you don't have a printer that's going to be able to a print so big, maybe just go to tabloid 18 by 12. That might actually work well. Um, and then once you choose, let's say that we're going to do, I don't know, uh, 18 by 24, you click on that one and then you tell it how you want it. Um, DPI, you definitely want to go all the way to the max, which is going to be 400. And that's going to allow that when it prints, you have crisp lines that you can see. And then you're going to be able to adjust here, color, margins, uh, bleed, and also a scale, which is going to be very important for the drawing. You're going to click here where it says use drawing scale, and then you can adjust however you want this to be. If you, if you want it 1 to 10, 1 to 25, 1 to 40, and so forth and so on. So I already have one here that I'm already working with. And this right here is going to be the representation of what I'm going to use. Um, right now, this is the plot plan. I already pre-made some lines just to show you what I'm working with. But you can do so, so much with this. Now, I should say that if you never use this uh, software, it is going to take a little bit. If you use Illustrator, uh, this is going to be pretty easy to kind of jump into it. Yes, not everything is the same, but there's a lot of things that are going to be very similar that you can use when you are designing. Uh, one of the things is that you are going to have all your tools on this side over here. And the ones that you are going to be using the most are going to be here, the pen tool over here. Um, and you can also press P on your keyboard. You press P, um, you start drawing your lines. And then if you want to adjust them, you're going to press A on it and then you can move them around kind of like this. So let's say if we're doing the house, for instance, we're going to go all along the house. And if for whatever reason one is a little off, you could always adjust it. If you want to add curves to it, you're going to go over here where it says convert. You're going to press this one and it's going to allow you to make curves. You know, you can adjust it however you want just to give you a demonstration of it um, and how you can use it. Um, for the most part, those are the ones you're going to start with. But there is so much more than just that. So let's press delete for that one. We'll take care of that one. And then we can always use shapes like, say, square or a circle and so forth and so on. Now, you might have noticed already here that it has color. Earlier, I was messing with it and I was putting some color where this will allow you to have um, different colors and even blend them. So if you want to do, say, something like a black one over here, but then you on this one, 
make this square or rectangle in this case I can adjust here and you can always do that so let's say that you have a pool you can always adjust this colors over here uh, to make it the way that you want it to go um, and then you can say I don't know add lines to it so right now this is going to be um, the edge the border so let's say I'm going to go to black and then I want this to be a thicker line I'm going to go over here to stroke and go up to say three four however thick you want this line to be um, of course you don't want it to be that thick so I don't know for now just purposes of this I'll leave it at four um, and then that's going to be how you adjust your lines and how you can also put color to it. Let's say that no, this is not in fact going to be say a pool, you want it to be something else. You can always change the color so you can always go to here. Um, I don't know, this is going to be the border so let's not do that. Let's undo that one, let's go to black on that one. But then the main color, let's say that you want it to be I don't know, grass or something, right? And you don't want it to be that, you know, that bright. You can always adjust it uh, however you want it. And if you don't want it to be uh, maybe a little translucent because there's something in the back that you want to see, you just go to here and you just adjust the sky. And anything behind it, you're going to be able to see it. So let's do this, see how that goes. If I go uh, over there, I can adjust it. But now, if I want to bring this forward, I can just go to this over here and I can tell it, hey, I want it to go all the way to the front and it's right there. But then I want it to be translucent so then you can see a little bit of the back. Um, when you are designing, there's a good, um, well, there's a lot of times where, where you are going to be doing things like adding a tree or adding, I don't know, uh, a trampoline and so forth and so on. And there's always things below it um, where you can adjust that so it can be seen, especially if you're doing this for your own project and you might have a lot of ideas in your head um, and you're thinking maybe I'm going to have a tree here that's going to get this big, but below I want to have, I don't know, uh, maybe some boulders or some perennials, other things like those where you just don't want to completely cover them up. So over here, I kind of put some of these guys over here where they are going to represent some of our shrubs over here. Um, you can also get those, um, you can make it yourself. You know, you can make a new page, draw um, things that are going to represent your trees and shrubs, and you can just bring them over, copy paste everything. So if you are on Mac, you do Command C, Command V, copy paste. Um, and if you are in Windows, it's going to be a different keys. I don't have it right now, so I don't know what that is, but you can still do it nonetheless. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to move this guy. Let's say that, I don't know, this is going to represent a tree, for instance. I want my tree to go there. Um, and I want this, another tree, to go over here. As I mentioned before, I already kind of uh, been working on this one. There's a little bit to kind of get things uh, over here. So I'm going to get rid of this plot plan. And keep in mind that I already put some lines over here. So you already have my lines going on here. This will represent here the property. This is going to represent the house. Um, it's going to be the, the covered uh, patio in the back. Um, the garage and so forth over here right now of course this is not finished by no means it's just me getting started but you can always do this once I'm finished with a design I'll, I take care of whatever I don't need to hide it for instance let's say that I don't need this guy right here well this guy is right there I will do that and now you can't see it um, and the same goes with the plot plan um, and then again, I can always add more stuff. This is just the idea that yes, this is a very powerful software, but no, it's not the same as an uh, CAD-based program. Um, even then, it is really good, uh, useful to use. Um, if you don't want to say, um, get AutoCAD or get Vectorworks or any of those that you're gonna be spending um, thousands, of, thousands of dollars, for a small project that you are going to be working for yourself. So this is gonna be more of a DIY thing. I should say though, if you are starting out as a designer, this is not a bad software to use. Keep in mind what I said before, it's not meant for uh, doing 3D, so it's not like I'm gonna do this and then get into 3DS, 3DS Max or Rhino or Revit, any of those, it's not gonna happen. But um, there are other ways that you can use this um, into a PDF and there's other out there, that um, other softwares that potentially you could use this with them. 
that's going to be a little bit more than we're really going to discuss. But this is the software that I'm going to be bringing in this year. I'm going to be working more on this one because this one is going to be allow me to kind of work on my laptop. Um, that I have my setup. Um, I've also been working with Concepts app on my tablet and I can use both of them. I really like both of them. And the reason why I'm trying to do this is so if you are thinking of doing your own project, um, you're not gonna be spending you know, thousands of dollars just to get yourself software and then you're only doing like a small portion of your house. And the idea here is that at least you can put things down on the design and at least get things rolling, right? Um, design is important because you definitely want anything you're doing to flow with your house, whatever that is. If it's in the front, the back end, whatever those ideas, it's always good to have an idea where you want to start to get to it. Anyways, guys, what do you guys think about this? Um, let me know in the comments. Let me know um, if you have any thoughts about this. If you have messed with this um, software, let me know your thoughts on it. And of course, don't forget the motto here, which is Dream Design Create. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.